For those of you who are joining us today, my name is Yelena Sokova. I'm the director or executive director of the Vienna Center for Disarmament and Nonproliferation. And on behalf of the center, I would like to welcome you to our webinar. Too often, many, or many of our webinars and seminars are focused on issues of concerns and challenges to nuclear nonproliferation, arms control, and disarmament. Today, however, uh, the webinar allows us to look at some of the more positive developments and examples at what it means to be a pioneer in nuclear governance, be it the conclusion of the first comprehensive safeguards agreement with the International Atomic Energy Agency, or establishing and regulating the first geological depository for spent fuel, and look at the whole history of the NPT implementation in one of the countries here in Europe. And uh, Finland is the uh, topic of today, and it's uh, work on non-proliferation uh, within the NPT context. We are very fortunate to have uh, this uh, webinar, basically um, uh, the impetus for it served the study conducted by Dr. Petri Payu of the University of Turku, uh, who takes the, the readers through almost six decades highlighting Finland's contributions to non-proliferation from the 1960s through today. Before I uh, formally uh, give the floor for opening remarks and then to Dr. Petri Payu, uh, I would like to remind our viewers about the um, conduct of the webinar. Uh, for those of you who are regulars, you already know that uh, uh, when we conduct our events through Zoom, uh, we encourage you to post your questions to um, the speakers through Q&A functions on the bottom of your screen. For those of you who are joining us on YouTube, uh, please send your questions to uh, events at vcdnp.org and we'll try to address uh, as many of them as we can uh, during the Q&A session. Uh, the way we will uh, conduct our webinar today, we'll have um, opening remarks offered by Ambassador Pirko Hamalainen, who is Ambassador of Finland here to Austria, and also a permanent representative of Finland to the international organizations in Vienna. And then I will pass the floor to Ms. Elina Martika, who is head of international cooperation of the Radiation and Nuclear Safety Authority of Finland, or STUK. And uh, I have known um, Elena uh, for many years. And when she first came to me uh, with the uh, offer of hosting this webinar on the uh, study conducted in Finland on its nuclear history and the NPT, I was extremely delighted to take that opportunity because nowadays we have so many different set stories or some challenging issues to discuss. And I thought it would be extremely important to have uh, for us to look at some of these positive examples in our field. And uh, finally, after uh, the opening remarks, um, Dr. Petri Payu, who is the adjunct professor at the University of Turku will um, uh, walk us through to the key findings of the study. And after that, we'll have a, a Q&A session. Uh, uh, Ambassador Hamalainen, please uh, take the floor. Thank you, Elena. Dear Elena, distinguished guests of this evening, dear friends, it gives me a great pleasure to participate this seminar on Finland and non-proliferation and 50 years of implementing in the NBT. First of all, I would like to thank Vienna Center for Disarmament and Non-Proliferation and the Radiation and Nuclear Safety Authority of Finland for organizing this event. 
I also would like to convey Ambassador Jarmo Wienanen's regards. He was unable to join us today, but I have an opportunity to include his points to my speech. Vienna, as the hometown of the IAEA, is an excellent place even virtually to celebrate the 50th anniversary of the Treaty on the Non-Proliferation of Nuclear Weapons. The treaty has been a key prerequisite for the peaceful use of nuclear energy in Finland, where the treaty entered into force in March 1970. Finland has been active in nuclear energy sector since beginning of the 1960s, and today we have a possibility to learn a little bit more about the history and the path we have taken in this field. I would like to convey my thanks to Mr. Petri Paju, the Radiation and Nuclear Safety Authority of Finland, and everyone else who have contributed to the realization of the study Nuclear Non-Proliferation Treaty and Finland. Accomplishing a study like this in these demanding pandemic times is a major achievement. The study highlights Finland's long-standing and consistent non-proliferation policy. A lot has been written about the origins of and reasons leading to the NPT. I do not think any other international treaty which has generated the kind of followings as the NPT. Year after year, there are dozens of workshops, seminars, studies and research paying attention to nuclear non-proliferation and the NPT. Despite aforementioned, attention is seldom paid to a one single country's relation to the NPT especially when the country in question never even contemplated acquiring a nuclear weapon. But today we can learn about Petri Paju's study on Finland's relationship with the NPT and IAEA safeguards. The treaty is an integral part of the international rules-based system. Finland has always been a strong supporter of nuclear non-proliferation and the NPT. We have clear energy and foreign policy reasons for that. Petri Payu highlights this suburbly in his study. It is clear that without the NPT, it would have been much more difficult, even impossible, to develop our peaceful nuclear program and energy security the way we have done. The study describes excellently way the real realities in which Finland had to conduct foreign policy in the coldest era of the Cold War. The key ingredients of Finnish foreign policy at that time were, firstly, managing bilateral relationship with the Soviet Union, secondly, seeking international recognition for Finland's neutrality, and thirdly, determined inching into Western structures. This study shows that Finland succeeded well in these endeavors. I would especially thank Petri Paju for clarifying certain mythologies of Finnish nuclear energy and foreign policy. The first being our role in the development of the IAEA safeguards. The study clarifies this well and provides additional information on the matter. <clears throat> The other matter concerns the order of signatures of the NPT. In the internal oral history of the foreign ministry, Finland is the first non-nuclear non weapon country to sign the treaty. Petri gives, us, uh, Petri gives this honor to Ireland. I guess we can live with that, this revelation too. To conclude, I would like to focus on the NPT. The Nuclear Non-Proliferation Treaty is a success story. It has curbed effectively the proliferation of nuclear weapons. The unalienable right of all the parties to the treaty to develop research, production and use of nuclear energy for peaceful purposes without discrimination has always also been realized excellently. Finland is certainly an example of this. Today, the unalienable right is increasingly important for developing nations and Finland is proud to support countries in realizing this right. When it comes to nuclear disarmament, there are very different assessments of the situation. 
It is indisputable that there are today from 80 to 85 percent less nuclear weapons in the world than during worst days of nuclear arms raising. On the other hand, there is still uh, there is all the reason to say that with more than 14,000 nuclear weapons, we are far from our goal of a world free of nuclear weapons. With these remarks, I'm looking forward to a fruitful seminar. Thank you for your attention. Thank you, Ambassador. Elina? Okay, thank you very much, Pir Ambassador Pirko, and also very much uh, thank you for Elena, your kind words, kind words about the positive uh, positive success in the NPT in Finland. And uh, according to one another story uh, study, uh, Finland uh, in Finland we have the most uh, happiest people in the world, so we have to bring something positive to the table. And uh, and my speech is. Uh, about why we made this study. The main point, of course, is that the NPT is 50 years now, and we would like to understand our history, what happened in Finland for a half century before, and what are the consequences to our work today. And also we would like to tell to the nuclear newcomer states that what, uh, what was their starting point in, in Finland. And uh, how did the peaceful use of the nuclear energy start in Finland? And was it a political decision or did the need came from the industry? And we see that uh, Finland is one of the pioneers using the peaceful use uh, of nuclear energy. And uh, Finland was the first country to have the comprehensive safe gas agreement in force just for two weeks before Canada had. And uh, why we have developed the nuclear energy in Finland, what have been discussed and what has been agreed. Finland has always had a very close cooperation with Sweden. And did we get some model from Sweden, for example, to our legislation or not? And what were our motivations to do the cooperation with, with other, other states in the world? I have been working for more than 25 years in the field of safe gas and non-proliferation. And uh, there are a lot of nice stories from the past. One, my favorite, tells about the three wise Finnish experts who were preparing the model safe gas agreement with the IAEA. Is it only the story or really happened? Happy to get the answer in this study. And this study has been fulfilled in cooperation between Ministry for Foreign Affairs, Ministry of Economic Affairs and Employment, and nuclear companies Fortum Power and Heat, Teollisuuden Voima, and Posiva and, and Stuk. Thank you very much. And I hope you have a very nice webinar. And now it's the, it's the real thing that Petri will tell us about the story of this study. Thank you. Thank you, Alina. Thank you for being one of the initiators and supporters of, of this study. Um, Petri, now the stage is yours. Thank you. Uh, also, from my, my, my um, part, let me see how I can. There it goes. You probably need to hit start the presentation, yeah, right here. Yeah, I'm just wondering where, where do I, where do I actually start it? Um, On the bottom right corner. Yeah, yeah. For some reason. Yep, right here. Yeah, that's what I'm trying to do, but for some reason it doesn't work. Well. Anyway, you can hear me and you can you can see the slides, can't you? Yes, we can see the slides and we yeah. can. Well, let's go with this. Um, thank you for, for, for all the previous speakers and, and all the institutions making this, uh, this event possible. Uh, I'll give you a quick, uh, quick introdu introduction to the study, a kind of an overview of what, what I was doing and what we, what we came up with, and then focus on, on some, some themes uh, especially the motives behind the Finns doing the early, early kind of model safeguards 
agreement or what was the disc what, what we discussed about that uh, safeguards ad agreement that was my plan plan for today on this on this topic of Finland and nuclear non-proliferation here's the research research report again or, or, or a picture of the of the reports uh, we did the orig original thing I wrote in Finnish so uh, so in some sense uh, when we, we made we made the translation uh, you might uh, might perhaps uh, you might there might might have been more changes if, if uh, or differences if I, if I had really written it uh, straight in English but in this case we did it uh, in Finnish uh, to and then did the translation so so that might explain some uh, some some things in the report some uh, details that are perhaps more interesting to Finns than than to to uh, readers abroad but the English that version is Sorry? Patrick, can I interrupt you? Um, uh, our team is saying that on the left top corner, there is uh, another icon yeah, right here. Maybe you can try this one, see if it works. Yeah, let me see. Like it's like you, my... You were almost, yes, this one. Oh, good. Okay. Thank you. Sorry for interrupting you. No, that was good. Uh, uh, so I, I want to mention about the background uh, again uh, shortly. Uh, the the STUC, the Radiation and Nuclear Safety Authority, commissioned the report, and uh, also also uh, people from the STUC and 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 the the afore aforementioned uh, institutions had the uh, persons in the advisory group, uh, which was really helpful. For the study, because I was able to discuss and get feedback from all these people with different different uh, experiences from the industry, and that really helped a lot in the in the process. Uh, then going into the study, the obvious kind of background, of course, is the is the atomic war, and the, and the post war situation where Finland was in, in the Paris Peace Treaty, banned atomic weapons, and that really. Uh, paved the way for, for, for the Finnish thinking. And also when the Finns uh, set up this energy committee in 1955, they really focused on the peaceful uses of at atomic energy and tried to stay away from all, all, the, all the nasty things that the, that the superpowers were doing with the, with the atomic, uh, atomic know-how. And this of course uh, was part of the uh, or became part of the Finnish uh, foreign policy that was striving for neutrality and trying to find find a balance uh, and, and uh, its own place in between the Cold War blocks, uh, the West and the East, and also also kind of starting to mediate mediate between the blocks if possible. This was really a, a slow process, but that was uh, happening happening and starting in the mid fifties. So that is uh, really, really um, crucial for, for understanding the Finnish experience. And then, uh, of course, the International Atomic Energy Agency was also being established in the mid 50s. And this, this was a really a gift for Finland also, because this was a, a way of, of getting, getting to this international level with the atomic energy issues. And Finland really was an eager participant and, and, and very mo motivated to help IAEA from the start uh, in, the, in the late late 50s when, when Finland Finland joined 58. Uh, the MPT I don't have to introduce to you all because because that's uh, you know it much better than I do I, I'm sure. Uh, I, I just want to say that the, that Finland Finland is uh, emphasizing that the goals of the th three goals of the MPT are mutually supportive. That was something that uh, was em emphasized when I when we were doing the report, and then that we also looked at this uh, question of who signed first, when, which was really complicated because it was signed uh, in in several locations, and and we don't have. Uh, well, we have some information about the signature order, but uh, but not complete information. And 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 
but the main point is that Finland was an early, early eager uh, participant to the MPT. Uh, the research question that that uh, we uh, chose in the end was was how and with which motives have the Finns implemented the non-proliferation treaty in different times, and then we looked at at uh, sub themes which were the Nuclear Energy Act being renewed in the late 70s, especially, and then the the long history of the uh, of of the uh, final disposal of, of the of the spent nuclear fuel from this very perspective. And going all, all the way from the late 60s uh, to almost present day. Of course, this is a, a study of history, so the sources are, are, are key. And we use published sources from uh, contemporary texts to all sort of uh, all sorts of scholarly scholarly uh, texts like articles and books. And we did interviews uh, and and a, a selection of archival sources. That's where the the uh, coronavirus epidemic really kicked in because uh, because that um, made it uh, made it really uh, well we could have maybe done more with it, with that uh, had it not been these uh, unusual times um, and about the interviews we tried to cover different uh, time periods and different perspectives from these uh, people from foreign uh, uh, Ministry of Foreign Affairs to the nuclear weapon researchers that also existed in Finland in the in the 80s and uh, 90s, uh, and to, to people inspecting inspecting these things uh, at Stuk, and those who also worked at the uh, IAEA. Uh, so Finland got an act active start with the MPT because it, it was uh, called to be a kind of mid midwife uh, in the UN in the United Nations. Uh, Finland uh, was asked to uh, lead this group of, of uh, countries sponsoring the MPT, and Max Jakobson, as the as, as the UN representative of Finland, uh, did that. And in his memoirs, he, he emphasizes that the, the, the motives were, well, of course, the, the general uh, detente, especially uh, peaceful relations uh, in Europe that were important, and also to emphasize. Uh, Finland's new kind of uh, position as a neutral neutral country, getting more more independent uh, than it had had been previously in the 50s, in the, in the shadow shadow of the of the, of the so Soviet Union. Um, and of course, they were they were following this earlier earlier idea that was already shaped in the mid 50s, that Finland would support all these. Uh, Initiatives that would bring the, the key opponents of, of the Cold War together in some uh, some reasonable way and try to try to mediate mediate peace uh, uh, with them between them. Now the question uh, we really uh, emphasized or, or wanted to wanted to look into was why did Finland hurry this international safeguards agreement? And and this was really. Uh, um, about the, the nuclear energy uh, solutions in the, in, in the late 60s. Uh, Finland's, Finland was preparing for, for building a unique nuclear power plant that was supposed to combine uh, pieces from uh, the Soviet Union that had made an offer for a nuclear reactor. And then they also want, they want, wanted to combine that with, uh, with solutions, uh, especially safety solutions from, from Western countries. Uh, and this was uh, something that had, had not been done before. And, and, uh, and the Finland, Finns, Finns were planning for. So there were obviously these concerns that what if uh, all these superpowers want to come and, and inspect their own, own, own uh, nuclear materials and, and technology there in Finland. And what would happen if these would even conflict, uh, you know, go, Somehow, somehow want to want to inspect each, each others, as as they said, the Finns. So this was uh, this concern over a conflict in Finland was one one key key motivator. They wanted to they wanted uh, international safeguards to prevent any any such events happening happening in in the Lovisa, what what became the Lovisa nuclear power plant. 
And in general, of course, uh, there were other other people, uh, other institutions who wanted to, to start producing nuclear energy, and they they wanted these uh, rules for uh, for the for the business, so they would would not be politically politically uh, constrained. Uh, they could they could buy nuclear for fuel from from whichever direction they they wanted. And this was especially the what the TVO uh, the Voima was was uh, looking after. Uh, now there, as as Elena Elena mentioned, there are these uh, stories that the Finns, Finns are well aware of of the th of that of the fact that uh, that Finns were early in making the safeguards agreement. Uh, this, uh, I mean, the studies abroad are not so well aware of this, but this was this is the Finnish Finnish uh, kind of uh, agreement that that they were they were the, they were, they did the model model safeguards agreement, and we, we wanted to inspect this. Was it so? Can we find evidence evidence of this these claims? What kind of evidence we can we find? Um, and indeed, the, the Finnish uh, the, the Finns came to this uh, um, uh, unanimity that they, they they wanted to at the same time negotiate these bilateral cooperation agreements with different countries that would supply nuclear uh, materials and technology, and at the same at the same time uh, they would want to negotiate the international safeguards agreement so that they would uh, give the controls controls to the IAEA that was supposed to take the controls uh, as as uh, as was was being being um, uh, settled in the in the MPT MPT discussions and these uh, these plans were going ahead in the late late 60s early 70s and we we can find these news reports of Finland's talks in the IAEA general conferences, where they said that you know this is uh, this is what we should do, and Finland is doing this uh, is is doing these negotiations for for a safe safeguards agreement, that everybody should do something like this, and 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 we are we are well well ahead in these talks. So this was before the the IAEA, IAEA uh, safeguards committee. Uh, and then we find in the IAEA archives, we find the minutes of the of the, this first first committee session, uh, safeguards committee session, uh, where they refer to this early draft that was made for Finland. So an early draft of of an safeguards agreement that was made for Finland, and that's uh, that's kind of the best evidence we could find uh, that there was this uh, there was this uh, draft. And it was perhaps even used as a model. And then I do some some uh, thinking about what what might might have been the implications of that model. Uh, but then there's there's also plenty of room for 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 the, for to take that to take that research uh, forward. But but that's 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 what happened. So Finland became the first country to sign this uh, comprehensive nuclear safeguards agreement, and the first country where it it came into force. 1972, and the Finnish uh, interpretation was that Finland was rewarded by the IAEA for for it being used as a, as a guinea pig in these uh, rehearsal ne negotiations. And what I say is that the, the Finns uh, got this uh, forerunner identity because of these these uh, talks. And this is this is where somewhere there uh, the three wise men of of Elena's story uh, uh, take take place and 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 act act as these forerunners and then uh, keep keep talking about that later on uh, so in the 70s uh, the Finns uh, are are important in establishing the mpt so in addition to this safeguards agreement they they are taking part in in making these trigger lists for nu nuclear export export issues and uh, are act active in many other initiatives, such as these uh, discussions on nuclear weapon-free zones in the United Nations, and then uh, are active in the first first MPT review conference in 1975. Also, let's talk about this uh, Nordic nuclear weapon-free zones 
but uh, those are not so much discussed in this this report. That's one of that's the one thing that has been discussed quite a bit before, and not, not these other initiatives. Here are some pictures of the of the activities, uh, uh, R and D activities also uh, taking place in Finland. In the uh, then of course there's a lot of uh, international cooperation going on, and I wanted to highlight this uh, White Angels. Uh, because I, I like the I like the the term, uh, and this was a, this was a group established in 1980 uh, review conference, uh, the Vienna group of ten: uh, Finland, Sweden, Norway, Denmark, Austria, Ireland, the Netherlands, Hungary, at some point Canada, Australia, and New Zealand. Uh, and the fact that uh, they they I think they themselves use this. Uh, White Angels term for for the for the, as, as a kind of insider insider joke, uh, but we're in fact uh, uh, advancing these uh, Vienna issues, so peaceful uses of nuclear energy, nuclear safety, safeguards, export controls, and and many other other issues, and are still continuing still continuing with this this work. Uh, so this is something that we I discuss uh, some to, to some extent in the report. Uh, also briefly mentioned are these uh, uh, demonstrations uh, for, for the nuclear free zone in the, in the Nordic countries. Pohjola is, is Nordics in, 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 in Finnish and other, other um, demonstrations against nuclear weapons in the 80s, 80s Finland, which were really European and, and, and worldwide uh, events, of course. Uh, then we go into the in the 90s, which was an interesting period of turmoil and dissolving the Soviet Union and, and the talk about the threat of, of nuclear weapons uh, in the former Soviet Union. Uh, and the Finns, uh, Finns taking part in building, building nuclear uh, material safeguard systems uh, in, the, in the area of the, of the former Soviet, Soviet Union and also, also taking part in, in running down the nuclear weapons industry. Uh, at the same time, the, the Gulf War uh, increased pressure to, to renew the, the IAEA safeguards and Finland was, was re eagerly supporting those, uh, those changes and supported the uh, additional pr protocol um, in, the, in the 90s. And then we, if, we, if we talk about the, the motives, uh, especially the Ministry of Foreign Affairs uh, uh, emphasized that the, the background, background motives were, were the Finnish, Finnish uh, uh, strive for the, for the more, more, more integration to the West uh, and, and, the, and the eliminating obstacles from the, from the EU membership application. That Finland left in 1992, and then uh, then they 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 emphasized that Finland has been an active member EU member in in, in the union's non proliferation policies. Although some say, especially the inspectors uh, at the field say that that this has caused uh, has been at the cost of this high national profile in the non proliferation uh, issues. Uh, and then, then for the Finnish role as as a, as a developer of, of technology for for the safeguards is is, is discussed at some length, uh, starting in the early, early 90s, uh, yes, early 80s. Finnish support program for the for the IAEA uh, safeguards, especially these new measurement technologies, and the, and the nuclear power companies supporting these these tests. And also in the in the reports cover, you can see see one of one such in, one such instrument was only only approved uh, last year. And of course, uh, we we can uh, there's a there's a little bit of discussion about the Onkalo, the the final disposal facility, and the Finnish uh, and the safeguard solutions uh, for that. So here are some some pictures of of the Finns Finns working for the IAEA. For example, here in uh, um, doing measurements in Iraq, Iraq in the in the early uh, 2000, I think. 
And then I also discuss briefly this uh, Finnish uh, efforts to, to build this uh, Middle East nuclear weapon free zone in the 2000s that Finland was asked to do and they and they made made progress uh, in doing these low profile negotiations but then then of course many events uh, prevented this conference to be organized in Helsinki and then the, then it was cancelled uh, 2015 because of the of the international attentions and but now now is again on the agenda as i understand so not only not only things that went uh, smoothly, but also also some of these uh, um, less smooth, or <laughs> how would I say, it, uh, operations. And of course, the most current issue is is the ban of of nuclear weapons uh, and the new treaty that is being will be ent entering the force in, in January. Uh, and Finland has remained outside of that, and this is perhaps the most uh, the one uh, discussion that has been most uh, mostly debated uh, in the Finnish context in the last last years, and it has divided the Finnish parties in a, uh, in a way that has not not we, we've not seen before. So that's in, in, uh, interesting, and, and that that discussion is still going on. Should Finland join or should it not? Uh, and there are these political parties that parties that uh, support Finland that Finland should jo join join the treaty. Uh, but then uh, other other parties uh, that say that Finland should uh, should remain outside of it. But I guess it's it's good to know this history, also uh, uh, to to inform inform that that discussion that is ongoing and and probably continues. So going to the main results, uh, Finland has has been a committed uh, implementer of of MPT in the long term. And has had varying motive, motives that I go through in the in the report, and has used these opportunities also also to to uh, to advance the NPT issues. Uh, it has at at, least at times been criticized for passivity passivity, so that's uh, something that's also also uh, taking taking uh, into consideration in the report. But Finland has has shaped. For itself and and followed this realistic step-by-step -step approach, and been perhaps especially sensitive to these views of the nuclear weapon powers in building its building its uh, its NPT policies. And when when Finland in the Cold War era, uh, Urho Kekkonen used this uh, slogan of that Finland was wanted to be not a doctor, a doctor, not a judge, uh, and I, I'm saying that. When we look at the 90s and and the times before uh, after that, we could say that Finland has has uh, been more more of an engineer than a politician, and and then we can especially refer to these uh, to these efforts as a as a developer of of, of safeguard te safeguard technology, especially uh, also with the IEAA, uh, and and in the in the final disposal facility Onkalo. That is also also a place where where the MPT is uh, is uh, obliging the the Finns now and in, in the future. Thank you. Thank you, Patri, and um, that's uh, very interesting. Maybe uh, we'll keep the slides for now. Um, Unless, and unless you have referred to them, um, uh, but um, I would encourage our audience to post the questions uh, through either Q and A um, function on the bottom, uh, or um, if there are questions coming uh, through uh, YouTube viewers, uh, our staff will forward them to me. But we already have one of the questions coming from the IAEA. Uh, and I think that um, um, one of the uh, interests that fit our audience and myself as well is your uh, discussion in the study and in your presentation today about the way um, 
this kind of being between the two superpowers shaped many of the uh, policies and approaches in Finland in non-proliferation area. And uh, the questions that I see here is uh, about um, your comment that the, that Finland was concerned about how um, each of the superpowers could study each other at uh, the uh, Lavisa uh, nuclear power plant. Um, and that was one of the reasons to speed up the conclusion of safeguards agreements. Um, maybe you could uh, say a little bit more about that. Uh, I also see um, uh, another question coming from Justin Reed, um, which is about how do you see Finland's role in the NPT and safeguards evolving into the future? So thank like your projection based on the what you've studied and um, various, as you said, motives behind it. So how do you see it evolving forward? Uh, I'll stop here because then there is a whole set of other questions that are coming in. And I also want to, before uh, just a second, to remind you so that when you pose your questions, I, I suspect most of them are coming to Petri. But if you have a question to Rina or to Ambassador Hammerleinen, please indicate it in your um, message. Thank you. Yeah, should, should I stop sharing now? What do you think? I think so. Yeah, yeah thanks. Mm, yeah, uh, I mean, the future question could be something that uh, Elena perhaps would be but also also could could answer um, uh, better than me, but um, that is of course uh, always hugely difficult for for a historian to uh, to to deal with the with the future issues, uh, um, and and I, I really it's 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 difficult to see. Uh, I mean there are clear, clear, clearly uh, many options, but it's uh, the future is. Uh, um, uh, I, I'll, talk, I'll, I'll, I'll talk about the, the the things in between the blocks uh, question question more because um, yeah that was that was one of the ideas uh, that the Finns clearly remembered every one of them that the this concern of of uh, of the uh, countries delivering technology or nuclear materials uh, that that Finland would have to take their uh, controls and that, that they might uh, they might end up in in a conflict in the in the Finnish Finnish uh, solution solution that was not uh, the standard uh, standard NPP MPP in any way so that was something that that came up that came some came, come something in every every source so that that is uh, that must have been must have been an important issue and that is something that they they foresaw uh, early on and tried to try to they were they were looking at the at the international discussions uh, that they heard of uh, from this perspective how to how, how to avoid this and how 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 to go for, forward with the with the uh, nuclear energy solutions uh, with this with this in mind and that's that's uh, that's uh, one of the reasons why they why they cooperated with the um, IAEA so so strongly all the way uh, and try to try to uh, strengthen uh, it uh, and and um, and also spread its solutions uh, to other countries. Um. Thank you, Petri. I uh, um, have a set of questions coming from uh, Tomoki Shiba. But one I, that I would really like to single out for you maybe to uh, answer is uh, the question relates to a different approach to spent fuel um, in Japan and a, in Finland. Uh, while the Japan went for processing, but Finland uh, decided to uh, not to do that and actually to 
uh, built a depository. Um, have you looked into uh, that issue? Why the, why the uh, decision was made that way? Not really, not deeply. Uh, Elena must, must know a lot more about that. But I think what I've understand that the, the, these other options were early on uh, not really uh, considered uh, that feasible for some reason, which is interesting that the, it seems that the basic solution uh, came, uh, came up quite early and they, they kind of locked it in, locked it in some way. That's, uh, well, that's a partly hypothesis, but anyway. Okay, thank you. I think uh, also Ambassador Hamalainen want you to take the floor, um, maybe answer some of the questions. Yes, sorry, I lost the connection at some point, but, but uh, concerning the NPT and our commitment and how the future looks like, uh, I just want to, to comment on that and, and say that NPT has been a success story. And, and if you look at our policies today, it's, it's, uh, it's in fact looking at the future and, and com we are committed as, as before. I mean, uh, the peaceful uses of the, of the nuclear is, of course, the, our, our strength, and that is what we want to want to emphasize but uh, NPT as such is we see it as an important tool in, in non-proliferation. Thank you. Thank you Ambassador. Um, I also want to uh, note one of the comments coming from Ambassador Al Hadid. She also mentioned that the that Finland is part of the uh, Stockholm initiative uh, um, the one that uh, uh, committed to the NPT and how to move towards disarmament. And uh, here this step-by-step -step approach, stepping stone is also probably well pronounced. Um, I do have a number of questions and uh, um, several of them really focus on the Finnish positions toward the Treaty on the Prohibition of Nuclear Weapons. Uh, and um, particularly uh, the, with respect to the explanations why um, Finland has chose uh, a kind of a current position. Um, and um, uh, maybe Patrick could elaborate a little bit more first and then I would be happy if uh, you ambassador or Elena could join as well, Patrick. Yes, obviously. I mean, but what uh, Amb Ambassador has said, uh, it's it's obvious that the MPT, uh, this strong commitment to MPT will will you know easily continue uh, with with Finland. I mean, in that sense, the future is is not unclear at all. But I was I was thinking about the possible new solutions, uh, especially the, about the Pan Treaty. Uh, that uh, those are those are unclear. But obviously, this uh, old commitment to the MPT uh, will will uh, seems to continue as 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 it has been. Um, um, yes, it 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 seems to be that this this uh, this idea that the uh, this old idea uh, and and well uh, established idea that these nuclear uh, weapon powers uh, should be involved in, in, in uh, these uh, treaties for them to be uh, really consequential, uh, then that is uh, what Finland has, has been emphasizing. And, and that's clearly not the case uh, at this point with the, with the, with the treaty banning the uh, nuclear weapons. So that's uh, one major, major point. Uh, but there, were, there are many others that the, that the, uh, the, the Finnish Ministry of Foreign Affairs has been has been making um, also the fact that uh, I mean this uh, this concern that it might might uh, diminish the the, uh, the the strength of of MPT. Okay. Uh, if I uh, sure, ambassador. Yes, uh, I think Petri uh, put it uh, very well. Um, I believe that our approach has always been quite realistic and 
And we follow at the moment with the interest uh, concerning the, the PAN treaty, but um, it looks like as long as the the uh, nuclear the powers which have nuclear weapons, if there is not interest from their sides to to uh, become a, a, um, a party in this treaty, it's difficult also to see that it can be realized. But uh, like I said, we follow that with an interest. Uh, what what how how it develops? Thank you. Thank you so much. Maybe just kind of push you all a little bit um, is um, uh, like, um, what are the, the kind of objections uh, with, the, uh, with the TPNW that not only is it only because the nuclear weapon states are not part of it, or is that more uh, focusing on the NPT and kind of uh, trying to avoid that um, uh, kind of collision between the two perceived or, or real? Or there are some other also stated reasons for that. Um, uh, and uh, I'll add to it a little bit more is that Finland, even though it's part of EU, but it's also kind of between NATO and uh, Russia in this respect. So I, I'm sure there are plenty of the different um, uh, considerations that goes into the position of the TPNW. Uh, but uh, if you could maybe elaborate what the other side of the Finnish uh, public is saying uh, regarding the involvement in the uh, TPNW. Petri, do you have any insights on that? Um, not so much. Uh, um, I can't say that. But, it's, but 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 really there are in, in the parliament there are these uh, these parties that are also also kind of being pro uh, pro to this um, pan treaty so it's a, it's a, there are these real uh, real um, actors that are, are kind of uh, more positive to it than than, the, than many other 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 parties in in, in Finland and um, yeah. I don't know if if, if 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 one could find a way to to make those treaties uh, kind of uh, uh, live together, so to speak. I mean, I mean to be be somehow um, compre comprehensive, so, so that then maybe maybe it would be would be possible for Finland to 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 be part part in both. I, I don't know how these how these other countries that are, are part of part of uh, both treaties how they. How they see it and what kind of how how can they um, how are they able to do that? Okay. Um, if I if I may continue. Um, yeah, I, I for the moment for the moment uh, if you look at the public discussion in Finland, uh, uh, the ban treaty is not very high there. Uh, if, if we look from uh, at, at the question from that point of view, but then if we think about the basics uh, and the political um, priorities, um, I believe that the, your first point was uh, maybe the biggest or or or, or um, most important uh, in our approach. That that uh, we we need to see that that um, nuclear weapon powers also get interested in this this pan treaty and and that would be the way forward uh, but like i said um, we we are following that and and we we want to know how the how the uh, situation develops uh, and and surely the discussion continues but for the moment uh, this is the basis for for our policy Thank you, Ambassador, and thank you, Petri. Um, switching uh, to a little bit of a different subject, um, there is a, a question 
uh, asking about um, when the uh, when Finland became part of the EU, it also became a member of the Euratom uh, community, and um, that integration certainly changed the way the safeguards were implemented in in Finland. And uh, the question is to meet, uh, Mr. Uh, Payu, how does he sees and uh, his studies uh, looks at uh, whether these changes were more positive or negative, um, uh, particularly in uh, political terms. I have to say that we didn't go that deep in that in that transition. I mean, there was there was a lot of things, a lot of things changing, changing, and there were some. The interviews inter interviewees uh, gave some thoughts about that, but um, uh, some some issues that that were raised at that time. But uh, but we couldn't go that deep into these changes. Maybe maybe Elena would would would. Uh, like to continue on, on this, I, I guess, and she would know this better than I. Okay, thank you. Uh, I can add a little bit, but from the very practical perspective, from the engineer perspective, because uh, I was working for Stuk during that time also, and I was heading the national safeguard system system when we joined to the European Union or just after that. So uh, in Finland, uh, it was decided to keep the national system uh, when, when joining to the European Union, and we even strengthened our national system when joining, because we were thinking that, okay, NPT will, will stay in the state in any case, not, not we are not going to transfer the uh, duties and the responsibility to, to some, somebody else, for example, the European Commission, they are not taking that, and it's, it's ours. And uh, and then then we also realized that uh, that okay we can we can do uh, we can also we have also to take care of the European Union requirements that our operators who are directly responsible of the Eurodom safeguards uh, requirements to the European Commission somebody has to take care that they will fulfill them and it was uh, it was put into our legislation that it took who has to who has to confirm that the, all the stakeholders in Finland will fulfill the regulations. So we strengthened our system and I think that it was a very wise decision during that time. So we, we have nowadays a very well, co very good cooperation with the European Commission, with the IAEA safeguards, and we can do the cooperation, all these three parties together. So this is my, my practical answer. And I think that from, from that point of view, it has, it has been wise. Thank you. Thank you, Elena. And um, I think we ran out of time to um, for more questions. Uh, with this regard, I just want to maybe um, offer uh, Petri uh, and um, Ambassador Hamalainen an opportunity if they wish to say some final remarks before we conclude the webinar. Um, Petri? I, uh, I just refer to the report. I mean, download the report and and, and see what's what's in interesting in there. And and and, you, and then then if you have some questions or feedback, then uh, please report back to me or or Elena and or, or or someone else in the in the group. Thank you. Thank you. Perfect. I want to just to say that uh, uh, last night before the webinar, I obviously still wanted to look more into this study. And it is incredibly rich and very, very interesting. So we were only able to scratch the surface, so to speak, during the presentation today. Uh, in this respect, I highly recommend those who are interested. Uh, and I think um, even during the presentation today, you already highlighted a few topics. Some of these issues were also uh, coming to the light uh, through Q&A for possibly uh, an additional research on some, from decisions on reprocessing to decisions on uh, the uh, Euratom, where we are now in terms of Finland being between uh, NATO and Russia and what role it could play in facilitating different things, maybe um, 
taking out again back some of its neutrality time uh, hat. But um, I'm going to stop here and uh, give the uh, floor for the last remarks to Ambassador Hamalainen uh, before formally closing the webinar. Thank you. And I can only say that I uh, joined the previous speakers <laughs> uh, about the, the, the study. It's, it's worth to read through. And thank you, Elena, for organizing this. And thank you also, uh, Stuck, for organizing this event. And the discussion continues. Thank you. Thank you so much. And I see by uh, a number of our participants already sending uh, their regards to um, Petri and to all the speakers, uh, highlighting how uh, much interest this study has generated and uh, really welcoming uh, the publication of it. With that, I would like to formally thank everyone, uh, Ambassador Pirko, uh, Petri, and Elena, I'm looking forward to uh, having more occasions to discuss Finnish uh, non-proliferation developments in other settings. Uh, and for everyone else, please stay safe and healthy and have a good day, evening or morning, wherever you are today. All the best. <laughs>